Hi guys, let's have a look at changing colors using the hue or saturation adjustment layer in Affinity Photo. And you can see the example there, there's a purple flower and a, and a bright blue flower. Exactly the same flower, just the colors changed. So let's have a look at how we do this. Select the object you want to change the color of. <clears throat> and in this case, it's the flower. Think about what part of the image you want to change. If you don't want to change all of the same colors in the image, you first need to create a selection and then apply a layer mask for the HSL layer. Now create a layer mask of that area. So let's do it. The first step is to duplicate your original image and make sure the original is locked. You don't want to accidentally um, destroy that. Now select the duplicate and next rasterize that duplicate, the new image, so that it's no longer an image, it's a rasterized image. Next, select the Selection Studio in the toolbar. If you remember how to rasterize an image, simply go to the Layers panel where it is, <coughs> select the toolbar and select Rasterize. Now, select the Smart Selection Brush Tool. You're in the Selection Studio, right? You can see the little purpley circle right on the top bar there. Now select the Smart Selection Brush Tool. That's the third from the top on the left-hand toolbar there. Set the brush size to something sensible for the image, say about 35 pixels in this case. Too small and you're fiddling around for hours. Too big and it just splotches everything. And in this case, you can see there on the context toolbar that 35 pixels is about right. Next, brush in the areas you want to change so the crawling ants map out the area of interest. Next, select the adjustment studio. You'll note I haven't worried about refining that image because it's very clear that it's selected pretty good anyway and I don't want to mess around accidentally creating layers or anything like that with the refinement tool so we'll just select it as it is and then go to the adjustment studio. Now next select the HSL tool you can see it there it's like three horizontal bars with little dots on them about halfway down the list of adjustments. That's the HSL tool and the context toolbar for Will, for it will appear. Now tap the range selection, that's that coloured wheel that's down the bottom, and it will bring up that pop-up. And in the pop-up you can see three sliders. They're related to the colours you're dealing with. So now let's change the overall colour by adjusting the hue, the saturation and the luminance to 26 minus 40 and 10 respectively and you can see the changes there in the image and you can also see the changes in the flower it is not the same color as it started out next adjust the opacity well you don't have to adjust the opacity but i didn't want to in this case a brightly colored or bright a different brightly colored flower i just wanted to tone down uh, the colors that i put on it so i've Reduce the opacity to 50%. Now we can see the mask is in place. Because it's a mask, it's non-destructive. You can see the mask is just above the image, the rasterized image of the flower that we made. And the original image, although locked, is turned off. So it doesn't interfere with the top layer. Do not merge the mask. If you select merge from down there, it becomes part of the image permanently. It becomes one image. You have no mask. It's permanent. And you then can't make any adjustments to it. Well, you can, but it's very difficult. Now, mask locking. You don't want the mask to affect everything that's below it. Maybe you're going to put more flowers below it or some part of a design. If you leave that mask in place, it will affect everything that's below it. So... To lock that mask to that image only, 
drag the mask down inside the image so the blue line is halfway in the image icon and you can you can see it slightly offset below the image layer there and it's got that little arrow pointing down you can now see the mask layer is slightly offset this allows you to come back to it for later tweaking of the edits you might decide you wanted a slightly different color you can come back and do it there to remove the crawling ants because you don't want them showing all the time simply go to the selection persona and then to edit and tap deselect and that gets rid of the crawling ants. Now there's the finished example and the original. And you can see it's been just slightly reduced in colour. The difference here is very subtle, but as the original cover image shows, you can make the differences as striking as you wish. And you can use this in fashion, sports, landscapes. Well, the ideas are limitless, really where you can use these and that's it so thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe and click on the thumbs up to like and if you want uh, access to thousands of of um, images and uh, videos and and templates have a look at Envato elements and that's the link on the bottom of the page there thanks for watching